Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. In today's video, it isn't going to be that much about Corel as far as it is about how to do a painted clock or really anything that you want to paint. I call it paint and replace. So all I did, I took my file of my Texas clock and I cut the Texas into three shapes or four, the star, the panhandle, the upper and the southern part of Texas, which is the state I live in. So this is a 12 inch clock and it would look a lot better painted. And this isn't the finished work on that one because of the fact that this is my clock and this is the UT Longhorn logo and you cannot use it. But I did check into it. You can make it for your own personal use. So after you cut out these four pieces, you've actually got five pieces. You've got the rim, and then you're going to paint them individually. I suggest painting, and this isn't the best of pictures, but painting them separately in plywood. So you need to sand it really good, at least to like 320 to grit sandpaper to get the plywood really smooth. And to do that, I just put it into the where it needs to fit. I taped it with blue tape like I've shown in videos before on the backside so they wouldn't move around. And I sanded the entire clock. And this is the MDF layer with the hole already cut into. And all I have to do now is glue in the four pieces. But anyway, sand your clock real good. The, the better you sand it, the better your paint job's going to do. My paint job today, even though the picture doesn't look good, came out really good. It's really glossy. Uh, plywood does have a little bit of grain, you know, tear out in it when you're sanding. So sand it really smooth. I suggest using two coats of primer. I use a gray primer, just a Krylon gray primer. And what that does, it, it primer is basically a glue and helps the paint stick to it and the primer stick to the wood real good and it also fills in the little cracks and holes and gives you a smooth service and then I gave each one of these a coat of or two coats of white blue and red paint but you could do this with anything you don't have to do this with a clock uh, it really makes things stand out as you can see in this picture I mean look at the detail and this isn't the best of pictures now in most cases when I was gonna when I would do this I would contour these lines um, to make them a little bit bigger than if you've seen some other videos before. But when you're painting it, you could still do that, but the paint is going to take up some of the kerf of the laser and fill it in so it, you know, you wouldn't want to chip any paint off when you're putting it in. And seeing the line doesn't really hurt in this case. Like you can't really see the line between the blue and the red and the white because the two layers of paint have joined together and made a little bit thicker but then all you need to do is just spread some glue so there's there's a 12 inch disc behind this and this is a little bit tricky because my uh, my hole is right here so you have to spread glue on the entire surface and then i would start laying this down this piece down i would coat this in you know a clear lacquer of varnish and you're going to want to wait a day or so to let the paint really dry because when you put weights on here uh, with some wax paper, you don't want anything to stick to it. So make sure your paint is, is good and dry and, and then you can put some weights on it. But all I did was take the state of Texas and you could do it with anything. You could just have a star in a round circle and paint the star and not paint the rest or, you know, paint the star white and paint the, the outside of your area, whatever you're engraving. Uh, blue or red or whatever color you like so there's my hole and I actually drew my lines past my hole I cut out for the uh, for the clock movement and this way I made sure it cut all the way through to that point I didn't want to have any broken parts but anyway hope that helped a little bit and thank you for watching